so I'm gonna do a reading on Chief Amachi. And sorry if I botch his name, but now I do know a little about him. The person that requested him gave me some information and I did look on YouTube for more information. Um, the only video I watched was this woman who received an email from somebody that was like, you can't tell me shit because he died and uh, I guess your religion or something was supposed to protect him. And I started to zone out with her like... It's not that I have a short attention span. I used to think that's what it is. But sometimes, like, you just, you catch the energy. So, and sometimes it's not, like, worth listening to because once you catch the energy, you know where the conversation is going. But I guess what was turning me off was the fact that she was blaming it on, I guess, his character. Like, if you're not a good person, then you're going to end up getting killed. Or people is blame, blaming the fact that he mixed hoodoo and voodoo together and stuff like that. And so basically, she felt like he was doing things that was against the religion, against the spirit. So he end up dying. And that's precisely why I don't initiate myself into anything. I enjoy learning about it. Viewing it from a distance. But to become initiated? Nah. I mean, it's just too many entities that you could fuck around and make mad and stuff like that. And... People, like, fear, like, I had this one girl come to me, and her mom was into Santeria, and everything was going good to her one day, until supposedly she made a spirit mad. And ever since then, she got sick, she lost all her money, and her life just went downhill. Now, this girl is scarred from watching her mom go through that. And I feel like it weighs even heavier because I feel like she's seen the extreme of the religion. Because I be thinking, like, so... If she wasn't in that religion and her life kind of went to shit, would she still have the same perception? Because she used that to be afraid of, I guess, tarot cards and all of that. She afraid of it because of the trauma of seeing her mom go, to, go through this religion and all of that. But it's too many rules, you know. There's certain Orishas that if you serve one Orisha and you serve another Orisha at the same time and those Orishas don't like each other, then it's going to be bad. And nah, so that's why I follow my own spirit. If I do do a ritual, is something that usually I created, something I'm comfortable with doing. And it could be as simple as setting attentions to a candle and lighting it, setting attentions to water and drinking it. And honestly, I don't feel like I need anything else. Everything else, you know, I work for it and I steadily get it. But I don't feel the need to worship a deity to get riches or fame or anything. 
Now, I see everything as energy. And I do feel like if you believe that you made a spirit upset, it's going to be on your mind and you is going to manifest that reality. And sometimes people are so superstitious that they can't even like help themselves or doing it because it's deeply ingrained in us to be superstitious. It's deeply ingrained in us to worship other people, deities, dead people because we don't feel powerful within ourselves just alone so a lot of times people are looking for external resources and that always get people all fucked up and i'm talking about fucked up in so many different ways when it comes to places like Africa and Haiti and stuff the culture they raise in a culture like they so strongly believe in the power of these rituals that they can't see that they subconsciously act out the dramas of it people are being manipulated out of their money I mean, to me, in a lot of ways, it's a scam. Now, I believe in energy. I believe in power. There's real power. But the power is coming from internally. If somebody was to perform a ritual, and you believe wholeheartedly that that ritual kill you, you're going to start to manifest that. But the power is still coming from you. If somebody curse you and you believe wholeheartedly that that person curse you, you going to manifest that hell. Like that's how I see it. Now it's like magnified and like Haiti and Africa and stuff like that. It's so deeply ingrained. And a lot of times this is happening in communities where there's poverty or people suffering in some type of way. So they looking for an outlet out. So it's a whole, it's a whole business around it. I'ma just keep it 100. It's a whole business around it. And I don't feel like it's a good thing because these partitioners they getting money they getting rich but everybody else is remaining poor if the power is so real and powerful then why your people ain't free yet what is you using for but you too busy want to charge people 300 400 dollars here to get a, a cleanse from you why won't you cleanse your whole neighborhood why won't you use that power to uplift everybody so until that start to happen people can't tell me nothing but i'm telling you it creates a psychology that is toxic when haiti got hit with those hurricanes that it's one specific hurricane and it was really bad they went around killing uh partitioners because they thought that they was the cause for the hurricane now i do believe that haiti is worked magic on from like a long time ago but this is how it was done when haiti rebelled against being slaves and ran the uh, europeans out what they did was disconnect haiti 
from all resources. And Haiti is an island. And they don't have a lot of soil. They have a lot of sand. So it's hard to grow shit there and all types of shit. But when it was cut off from the resources, because before colonizations, they was still um, trading with people off the coast. But they was cut off on purpose because they was upset that Haiti rebelled like they did. Now, what happened is that the economy severely suffered. Um, there's a thing that's called white flight. And it's when um, white people abandon an area, but they also take like all the resources and everything like it's also happening gentrification but it's like reverse so it's like let's say that a place was already gentrified and then all of a sudden black people will start to move in and then white people get uncomfortable and then they will do this white flight all the white people will move off to some other area but then what would take place is redlining and monopolizing the community for failure. I mean, just think about this. Like you see the ghettos and stuff and housing projects that they created, but they created housing projects in order to get the land that black people already own. And even they did that systematic First, they took away the jobs from the husbands. Then after a long time of suffering, they would come along and be like, look, the government have built these housing apartments that your wife and kids could move into. But all you got to do is sell us your land. Now, at this point, they've been going hungry. Because they took the job away from the man. Now, originally, and in some places it's still like this. When you move in these housing apartments, they have stipulations. For one, the women, it was only for women and children. The man could not move in. And originally, they um, they took away televisions and telephones and stuff because they didn't want the people to see how the neighborhood was being monopolized. Because the area that they bought from black people, they turned that into white suburban neighborhoods. Which, to be real, I mean... The way that um, suburban neighborhoods are operated is a money grab. So the white people that live there, they might not ever own that fucking home. And they set it up like that. So nobody is benefiting. But white people do have more privilege. And they do that on purpose. Because white people they have this false sense of freedom because they enslaved too and because they are treated better and they see these other people being treated bad they feel like they are superior and it creates all types of different social dynamics so they do all this shit on purpose and that's how they work magic on people They say in the woods and Haiti, they have the shadow people that's in it. And in some neighborhoods, they, you shouldn't even come out at night. But this is like created by the mentality. I hope I'm making sense to people.
is created by the mentality. I believe those child of people are real. Even if it's just people dressing all black and making blood sacrifices in the middle of, of the night, even if it's something as simple as that, it's still real. The reason why it could even be manifested for people to view it like that, it was created. I guarantee like there's a whole storyline of when these shadow people start to appear. And before then, there was people suffering, religion, being like some type of savior for people who are suffering. That's what they use. It's kind of like a pacifier. But within the religion, they create certain mentalities to make people manifest what they want them to manifest so people in haiti they have a deep fear a deep fear of this magic now when it comes here to us we don't live in that type of fear i mean we wrapped up in christianity anyways but You know what? I'm, I gotta get into this. I gotta get into the reading. My bad, y'all. My bad. Cause I could talk about this all day, but one day I will try to break it down. But yeah, let's get into the reading. And one other thing, like usually voodoo priests or whatever, they put themselves in a position to make everybody feel like they are powerful. So they are getting like the secondary most powerful energy besides the deities. Because when people come to them, they already feel like, oh, this person is powerful. It's a, a mystic energy around them. But I do believe that a lot of times they be ripping people off because the power come from within you. So it depends on how you feel after that ritual. Do you feel like it helped you or not? Like there's an episode, and I'm sorry y'all, I know I'm gonna get to the reading. There's an episode in True Blood where, um, I forgot the black girl name, but her mom was an alcoholic. And her mom went to this voodoo witch or whatever. And I know I told this story before, but it's relevant. And afterwards, she stopped drinking. She got better. She felt like she was delivered after going through this very emotional ritual. Now, her name was Tara. Now, Tara was mad because one day she seen the voodoo priest lady at the grocery store being regular. She wasn't in her, her get up and everything like that. So she went and confront her and was like, you ripped my mama out of the month. My, <laughs> you ripped my mama out of her money. And the person was like, well, is she doing better? And she was like, yeah, but it's not because of you. And the woman had to explain to her, like, but it's because she believed in me. You know what I'm saying? I don't even really like to tell people this because in some things, I want people to believe. I want you to believe that you bless. I want you to believe that you deserve it. And I want you to believe that you are powerful within yourself. And you create your own rituals because when you do that, you just making the energy more real for you. And it's going to start to play on your mind in like subconscious ways. And you're going to act in a manner that will help you to manifest what you're trying to manifest in a ways.
so but if you do feel like you need to go to uh somebody else to help you something externally then go ahead but what's really powerful is your belief if that person make you truly believe then it's going to work but you have to be real with yourself ask yourself what type of person you are because me i had to do my own magic because when i go to other people like I don't know. I feel like people disappointed me so many times in my life that, you know, I had to just believe in myself because I trust myself. And I'm inquisitive. I question everything. Like, if you're doing something, you're going to have to explain that shit to me. You're going to have to, you know, it's going to be hard to convince me because I'm questioning everything. And I also don't like that energy of being like trick. You ever go to one of those shops at the psychics and then every time afterwards they want to charge you $200 and $300 for some type of cleansing or ritual or something like that. I believe in psychics, but I don't trust those type of people. I don't. You could feel it in their energy. You know, they want to make that sell. That's the sell that they want to make. You're saying you're going you gonna to charge me $300 to cleanse me? And I'm kind of cheap, y'all. I just, I can't be spending my money all crazy and willy-nilly and stuff i got a daughter <laughs> so i'm always budgeting you know and when i realized i didn't want to pay 300 dollars for that you know what i started to do i started to create my own ritual to be cleansed because i ain't gonna lie at that time i needed to be cleansed because i didn't believe in myself But I'm a lot better now. Still working on it. Still working on it. All right. So, hmm. Thinking about what to ask. Now, I people want to know, did he really die from malaria or something like that? I'm going to ask that, but I want to ask some other things first. Oh, so the reason why I felt like that woman wasn't really sincere in her, like, whatever she practiced is because she told me that I wouldn't be able to cleanse myself. Like, I needed her. She tried to make me depend on her. And I ain't like that. And then it was like, I don't even remember the reading because she was so focused on trying to get this cleanse. She kept telling me like, oh my goodness, you really need a cleanse or whatever. Like you would not be able to do this for yourself. Then she tried to fear me saying that if I don't get the cleanse, then like my life could be in danger and all this shit. And I'm like, like, what the fuck? So the way that she was acting made me feel like she wasn't sincere. And a lot of times when you come across psychics that's in these shops, they do become gimmicky. They do become a gimmick because for one, that shop to stay up is high as hell. It's higher than a motherfucker. For two, I feel like 
some of the areas that they are set up in a lot of people who like is just on a night out and they might be drunk or something they come in to talk to you they might not want the truth they might want just something gimmicky so and it takes and i don't really feel like spirituality should be on a clock schedule like that a nine to five or some shit I feel like it's very draining to spiritualists because it's all about energy exchange. So, I don't know. You know, it wouldn't be something I do. I wouldn't be able to handle it. Like, I'm too sensitive. I wouldn't be able to handle it. I would probably lose my mind, for real. So I guess the first question I'm going to ask is what was his relationship with his religion? So he was hoodoo, but when he died, he was taking a trip to Africa to become initiated in voodoo. And then when he came back, he died from malaria. Now, in the video that I did see of the girl, she made a good point. When you go and you visit Africa, you have to get certain types of shots. And one of them is for malaria. So, but I'm not sure if that's for everywhere or just for certain places. I want to look that up. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting all right what was his relationship with his religion oh child <laughs> i'm saying oh child because the death card came out And a lot of reversals. It's very attached to love and family like for some reason like maybe for him to even get started with it he wanted to attract like love or it could also be that a girl that he was involved with yeah I'm starting to see it um got him into it actually he got her into it to heal from something from a relationship like it seemed like the girl put something on him at least that's what he believed so in order to like free himself from it, he got into this religion. He do feel like it benefited him. He felt like he got blessed and he give that credit to his religion. And that's like the only car they came out upright the nine of cups which is wish fulfillment but i do feel like it caused him like a lot of headaches
and fears. He had like a constant theme of being afraid that somebody did something to him. And that's kind of like what kept him stuck in the whole practice. I feel like that's the reason why he was even trying to get initiated to vo voodoo because he was worried about somebody putting something on him but Uh, even to keep his family protected but he did have a lot of fears he had a lot of fears surrounding his whole reason of being religious and he used it to prevent like anything bad from happening to him and when something bad would happen, he would think somebody did something. Listen, I'm going to tell you now that when it comes to life, we're going to have some bad times. I don't care how much you work on yourself. I don't care if you become like Jesus or something. You're going to go through hard times. It just depends on how you handle those hard times and when it came to him I felt like he couldn't handle his situations maturely because instead of like trying to work it out talk to the person he would go and give an offering he would go to a partitioner Instead of him just handling the, the information, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so tongue tied. Instead of him just handling it like he should, like a grown man. Because with this one situation with this girl, I feel like he kind of ghosts her. She was like really stuck on him. She feel kind of obsessed, but she was very attracted to him. And with this four of cups, I feel like he was just like bored of her and kind of distant himself, but he didn't do it in a way like if he would have did it to me, I would have been upset too. He did it in a way that was trifling. He just pulled away from her. And I believe she told him. Nah, mm. Spirit saying that he got an STD and he thought that was associated with some type of curse on him. Child. But I think the girl, she did do something. I do see her at an altar. yeah she did do something to um wish bad bad on him but originally i felt like she was trying to bind him oh lord so oh my goodness Child, let me hit my pen for it. <clears throat> Originally, she wanted to bind him to her. And 
this is when they were still in a relationship together. But it didn't last. It didn't work. So eventually he kind of like goes to her. And she tried to get him back. I see her like blowing up his phone all the time. But I feel like somebody might have told him that this girl binded him. Like somebody that could see energy. Somebody let him know. So that's why he just walked away from her like he did. I feel like she did. he did that before. But because of these rituals, it lured him back in. I feel like their relationship was supposed to be something like a one night stand. And he tried to detach because that's just was the energy between them. So what she did, it did pull on his energy. It did. But when he came back, it's like he couldn't understand why he was there. Like he couldn't understand and his life wasn't going right at that time because of all of that. And then somebody told him about this. So he got away from the girl. I'm seeing so much, but it's going too fast. And my mind is going too fast. In my mind, I... So I'm just trying to focus on one thing. That's why the tarot cards really help me because if I didn't use it, these visuals and everything, they will be coming in so quickly that I won't really be able to make sense of it. But when I pull cards, I could zone into a specific energy better and it even helped to calm the visuals and help me just focus on one aspect i'm gonna take a picture of these cards because <laughs> they tell the story so clearly at first, I was struggling to pick up on it because sometimes I get so into the visuals that I stop really focusing on the cards and stuff and I have to like combine it together. But when I was zoning back in, I looked at the cards and I'm like, damn, the cards is telling you the whole story. I don't have to use so much of that part of my intuition so much. So I've been learning to do that because it's um it could be overwhelming to trying to stop the visuals. So but yeah, so the question was his relationship with his religion. So in these cards is showing you the musician reverse so he was already because this all talking about this queen of wands reverse at the end his relationship with hoodoo started with this female and it was a situation and with this death card this telling me about their breakup
you could feel in the Queen of Wands reverse card because under it we have the Eight of Swords and the Nine of Swords. You could feel that energy. So when I tap into it, I could see her doing the rituals. Where he from? I see her doing the rituals. I feel like she even went to somebody before. And it was working for a little while. But I'm telling you, those binding rituals, they mess up both people. Because you shouldn't force somebody to stay with you that wants to go. And if you do manipulate their energy to feel drawn to you, it's going to create like a confusion inside of them. They're not going to know why they dare. They're not going to understand like they will feel like they want to leave, but they feel like they can't. So they will feel trapped in it some type of way. And then that person will change. You might like to him because he was a hustler. He knew how to get money and all of that. But if you do a binding ritual on him to try to get him to stay and he already wants to leave, he might stop being ambitious. It has like a negative effect on a spirit. When you bind somebody to you, that's why I don't recommend it. Because that person is not going to even be the person that you fell in love with. Because they're going to be too confused in their spirit. Because they're going to feel their spirit being manipulated, but not know what it is. So I wouldn't recommend it. Also, I feel like he had nightmares sometimes. I really feel like the reason why he was going to Africa is because of fears. It's like he wanted more protection. I do feel like something was done to him when he was in Africa. So let me get into that. So I'm asking more of why he went to Africa. He was stressing because I got the nine of swords again after reshuffling it. It came out again. But also the Ten of Cups, the Three of Swords, and the Five of Wands, which is all reverse. So, I feel like this had to do with a, a breakup. Something going bad in a romantic relationship. That made him go over there to try to get some work done. Because at the bottom of the deck, I have the devil card. So he was feeling like he did something wrong. He felt like he maybe made a deity mad or something like that. He felt like he did something wrong. Mm. So what happened to him? Let's see. Got to Africa. <laughs> that devil card.
something didn't go right something didn't go as planned and i feel like he got messed up with somebody a female I feel like it was a female that set him up. <laughs> he seemed to have a common theme of that happening. But he wasn't just there to do that service, but I feel like he was there to meet somebody as well, like a woman. And they was trying to get something out of him. Like, I'm feeling like these people that he met up with, they felt like he had more money than he had. Just because he was in a movie. So he went over there. He met up with somebody. And I feel like when he got there, they was trying to charge him even more for the services. And I believe he actually wanted to, at one point, turn down the service. Because he was starting to feel like he was being played it was hard for him to make it back he had to go through a lot on that trip if there's any videos of him talking about the trip or anything i would like to see that i do believe he went along with the service but it wasn't a good experience like whatever he had experienced, he felt like he sold his soul to the devil. That's what he felt like afterwards. Because there's a lot of stressful cars here. He was stressed and he might have was thinking about not even dealing with the religion no more. It was hard for him to even get home. I'm not sure when he died. Like, could have said that when he came back to the U.S., he discovered that he had malaria. I want to look that up real quick. Okay, Miss Actimus Stories, I had to come back to your message. And reread it because you gave the information I did try to look it up but some of the information is really vague like I like the fact that you said that he died within 10 days after he returned you also said that some people believe that it was a revenge magic spell Now, I feel like I'm going to get more into what I feel like what happened, but I do feel like he got initiated into something, but it went really wrong. Like, and I'm, it was leading up into it. I think that he got scared at one point. He felt like he had to do it. And I feel like he ended up paying more than he thought he would and he didn't trust the people around him and i do feel like he was in a shady situation but i'm gonna look more into that
Okay. Alright, so I want to ask, like, what started to happen when he got home? Because I left off when he was coming back to the U.S. He was really relieved to get back home. And for real, for real, I think that that trip was going to really change him. Like, change the way that he do things. Change the way that he did business. He was going to... try to do things better he might even wanted to change his religion because i feel like that situation really spooked him all right yeah when he got home he was focused on celebrating It might have any it might have been somebody like when he came home he was like I'm gonna settle down with her as well or do better by some woman because he was so spooked by whatever that was he did in Africa it was very spiritual for him but he walked away feeling like he wasn't going to make it back to the U.S. I don't feel like he thought he was going to make it home. I feel like it was a scary situation for him. Yo, this devil card, like... From him going there, getting the initiation to him trying to get home, and now he is home, and we're trying to figure out what killed him, the devil card been showing up. So, to be real, it do look like there was some type of negative energy that followed him. I felt like he knew something was wrong with him, but he couldn't figure out what it was. He couldn't pinpoint it. this down to a cups this is giving me relationship vibes like what's attached to him dying it has something to do with romance somebody he was dealing with somebody he was intimate with And I, hmm, hold on, yeah, somebody did put some 
bad juju on him. <laughs> like, for real. I have a deck. Hold on, let me try this. I think in this deck, it have a... No, nah, that's my other one, which I don't know where's it at. But yeah, with this betrayal card, and it's a woman. It's a woman. And I feel like that could be had. <laughs> that could be have. I feel like that's a woman from Africa. I feel like he had a situation there. And when he got there, she started to play like all types of games. And I think she was trying to get him to spend money on her. And she got upset about something. And I believe it's because he refused to I don't think it's just spend money but he might have told her that he would marry her or something it was something that she wanted from him it doesn't feel like just one person It do feel like people was working together, but the energy is like in Africa. I don't feel it here in the U.S., but I do feel like he had a situation here. I feel like he was dealing with somebody here. He could have been married. I wonder did I read that hold on no I ain't gonna look it up but but I still like I got more questions because I want to know what happened exactly like how did this energy work like what she do and how did it work so hold on hold on all right y'all honestly i think he was either injected with something or drunk something that messed him up and i feel like during that ceremony at some point he wasn't conscious and when he wasn't conscious like somebody did something but i feel like it was either like some type of poison like injected with something Something that kills you, but kills you slow. One of the symptoms of it is exhaustion. And I believe like blur vision. So he was having symptoms to something, but he couldn't figure out what it was. And there was a lot of factors. I feel like it was more than one person. Entertainment purposes only, y'all. You know, shit. I'm just talking. 
I'm just talking. Having power and control was a factor. And it was some political factors too about like people position, stuff like that. And women, I feel like he might had a weakness for women. And for some reason, he attracted some real crazies. I won't even, yeah, some of them crazy. Because this happened to him more than once. Like... I guess he had very spiritual relationships because it was a divine lesson in it. And I feel like all of this was meant to happen. He just, he signed too many bad contracts on the way. Because he could have lived longer if he made and I believe before he even went to Africa, if he made slightly different decisions. So it seems to be very karmic because I was noticing that I don't feel his energy. Sometimes when I do readings on people who passed away like their energy would show up but his like I could sense it but it's like busy it's going through some type of cycle he might have got reincarnated immediately cuz um, there's a specific lesson that he needs to learn. So yeah. He's trying to get through transformation. He have a habit of making similar mistakes and he set it up like this like he didn't want to live long if he made certain contracts because if he was going down that path, he didn't want to have like a long life on that path. So it's like he set it up like this. And it's like different variations and everything. So like he could have still been on this path. And like got into a car accident or something. But either way, like if he was on this particular path, he didn't want to live long. He wanted to reset. Because there's a specific lesson that he wants to overcome. And he already feel busy. Like I feel like he could already be reincarnated. Um, and he takes a lot of his energy with him, like put a lot of his energy in his body. What you got to be careful with, cause sometimes people come here and they have so much of their energy in their body. I mean, you could really blow a fuse or something like. Sometimes, depending on which body you choose, they might not be able to 
handle that much energy. So, but some people, they come down here with a lot of energy because it can make them powerful in certain type of ways. Like a lot of these people can become celebrities, but that's not always the goal. You shouldn't be, not everybody is supposed to be a celebrity. But like people with a lot of energy, cause I have a lot of my energy, but not as much as I could have because it's all about balance but people who come with a lot of energy they have this magnetic feel to them and it draws people in because that same energy energize other people like think of Beyonce on stage you know what? Think of Michael Jackson. And I do feel like he had a skin condition, but I do feel like he bleached his skin to um, have it all the same color. But he has so much energy. He has so much energy in that body. That's why when he was doing concerts, and he just stood on stage for like 10 minutes and people will pass out. And during that time, he just exerting all that energy. So. But he likes to be famous, um, this guy. He don't even have to try with that much energy. It just naturally comes to him. People who have less energy, they have to work a little harder to be a celebrity. You ever seen people? They not that talented. They not that great, but they just attract a lot of attention. Usually they be having a whole lot of energy. And probably somewhere in their life, they is blowing a fuse. I guarantee you. Pay attention. Sometimes they get illnesses like lupus and stuff like that. So I'm for the X. What lesson is he trying to learn? What lessons? Dang, if this Eight of Swords keep coming out, to me, that is telling me that he trying to become less mental. Because he always gets so lost in his head and in his mental every time. And he constantly chasing after things that he don't need. So he also trying to learn how to detach. It's another spirit, though, that he always run into, and they, they have some type of lesson together, but I feel like maybe they are supposed to try to transform each other. Hold on. Let's 
almost too many cards. I even learned how to protect himself from this energy. I almost feel like this particular woman is like a projection of him. And he purposely project her outside of himself. So he could deal with it in that way. Okay. Hold on, y'all. I'm using another deck. My phone kind of far away. I usually pause it so y'all don't have to suffer through the shuffling, but just this one time. What is his purpose? Well, what lesson he is trying to learn? Like this woman, I feel like it's like a part of his feminine energy. And he's trying to deal with it. It's like he's supposed to heal it and combine it in something like, like some way. It could be internally like he needs to learn how to combine his masculine and feminine energy and find peace with it. It could be that too. So what lesson he is trying to learn. Look, the card Harmony came out, which totality. So all of this is about finding balance. Beyond illusion. He has a tendency to get lost in religion too. He trying to stop doing it because it keeps him limited and he wants to get out of that box. He wants to be able to expand. He trying to expand and he has it in him to do it. But it's because he has such a hard time finding balance. And something that I read about him is said that his sister said this was the happiest he was in his life. I don't really believe. I don't believe that. Like, let me tell you what website it was. <laughs> 